Dear colleagues, what you will hear now, it is uh, a very important new uh, research which is currently taking place at Panerei Mass Killing Site. Uh, this is intense and revealing process which invokes new documentation, new technological opportunities used and uh, we have two colleagues here. Uh, one of them is Neringa Latvita Gustaiten and my colleague who is the head of history research department at the museum. And uh, also we have uh, Saulius Sartsevichus from uh, Lithuanian Institute of History. Uh, and the museum and the institute, they cooperate closely uh, in uh, working on this research together. So, uh, Neringan Solus will present the new findings, what is happening at the memorial site. And just to briefly remind you and to inform those of you who are not aware of the process, Panerei Mass Killing Site uh, is under the renovation process and a couple of years back we held the contest for uh, an idea of renovation of the memorial site. And, um, and the government and the Ministry of Culture and the Jewish community is also involved uh, into the common working group and it's really a very long and complex uh, way to go still. And those of you who have not visited the site, you have a chance to do it on Friday. We will take you uh, to Panere or Ponar so you will be able to see the site as it is today. So um, uh, just one small <laughs> remark before we give the floor to Nering and Saulus. I just remi remember that those of you who uh, use Twitter, so uh, you can tweet uh, using the uh, uh, hashtag, you, you see it on your cards, so you can use it and you can please send your friends and colleagues information what you're doing here with us. So, uh, Neringa and Saulus, the floor is yours and thank you. Tai sveiki visi ir šiandien man teka tokia didelė garbė pristatyti būtent naujausius tyrimus, kuriuos mes kartu muziejus istorikai atliko kartu su Lietuvos istorijos institutu. Tai aš pradžiai turbūt papasakosiu, kaip viskas, tai, kaip viskas prasidėjo, kada mes pradėjom tyrimus ir tiesiog kaip viskas vystėsi toliau. Tai... Lietuvos vyriausybė įvertinusi poriai, kai rekonstruoti panerių masinių žudinių vietą, pirmoji iškėlė kompleksinę panerių memorialo sutvarkymo idėją. O 2011 metais draugė su valstybiniu Vilniaus Gaono žydų muziejumi suorganizavo tarptautinę konferenciją čia, būtent tolerancijos centre. We organized a conference right here in the Tolerance Center, where we talked about the reconstruction of this memorial. We had uh, delegates from uh, Poland, uh, from Germany, from uh, Israel and uh, the United States, um, members uh, who are part of uh, the ministries that deal with uh, cultural heritage, uh, politicians. And the goal was uh, to present uh, the ideas of uh, Panerei mass killing site reconstruction to talk about uh, the new concept uh, that we could uh, ad adopt. The, then the Prime Minister Andrus Kubilius was saying, and uh, I quote, it is extremely important for us to use uh, the best case practices uh, of the world. Panere is uh, our moral commitment uh, to the victims who have been killed here. And uh, this is uh, an example of uh, uh, memory that we need to enshrine. The end of quote. The Ministry of uh, Culture, Department uh, of Cultural Heritage, uh, the Municipality of Vilnius, and uh, the Jewish community uh, took part in uh, this uh, big project. In 2011, Vilna Gan State uh, Jewish Museum took over the whole territory of uh, Panere Memorial, and that encompasses 19 uh, hectares. Uh, after that, we had uh, a uh, 
competition uh, where we talked about the reconstruction of the memorial and 16 uh, participants uh, took uh, place. We, what, we saw that uh, we need to change uh, the our perception of this uh, memorial site. And uh, we started cooperating together with uh, the Lithuanian Institute of History. And uh, it was a very uh, productive cooperation. And uh, our historians uh, looked through all the uh, archives, uh, gathered uh, all sorts of uh, documents, and there were archaeological uh, research uh, performed, uh, uh, various uh, scanning uh, with new technologies, uh, geophysical, 3D scanning, geophysical um, research was uh, conducted. And uh, we uh, found a lot of uh, interesting uh, things, which we will be talking about. One of them is the escape uh, tunnel. We found where the escape tunnel probably uh, ended. Uh, we made sure to respect uh, the religious tradition of uh, the Jews, and uh, we integrated uh, uh, all sorts of information. And in 2016, we presented a, a comprehensive history of uh, this uh, site in Lithuania, and that was uh, published in Lithuanian language. And after that, we started uh, a second uh, stage of our research. We uh, scanned uh, area of 47 hectares, and uh, we uh, chose uh, the areas uh, to perform further 3D scans and other um, experiments. As for the future of uh, this uh, research, uh, this uh, information that we gathered will be part of the technical requirements uh, for further public tenders. And uh, we all will also publish uh, our study in Lithuanian and in uh, uh, English in the second quarter of 2018. We uh, hope uh, to have a, a visitor center uh, on the site if we get, uh, of course, support uh, from uh, the government. And hopefully it will be uh, completed by 2020. And uh, now uh, I would like to ask uh, my colleague uh, to present uh, the new findings uh, which uh, have uh, totally changed uh, our perception, uh, perception of this uh, site. And uh, this will be presented by my colleague from the Lithuanian Institute of History, Solus Sersavichus. Good uh, morning, everybody. Uh, I will uh, um, read my presentation in order to not talk uh, too much. There are 227 mass killing sites in Lithuania, and uh, the research in situ of these sites uh, were uh, done uh, just um, sporadically, and it was all uh, de dealing with uh, the exhumation of uh, the murdered people. And uh, the works started in uh, right after the war in 1945-1946. And it was performed by the uh, so-called uh, Extraordinary Commission. One of uh, such commissions uh, was working in uh, 1944 in uh, Panere. It is uh, an area which is close to Vilnius, uh, approximately 10 kilometers from the city center. It is uh, an area that has a, a real, very good railway connection, and uh, it is close to Panere uh, village. That is uh, where in 1940, Soviets uh, had aviation fuel, so fuel so storage facilities, which were not uh, finished uh, to um, est establish. And therefore, the pits of uh, those uh, storage facilities uh, were used. And uh, there, uh, 
uh, a lot of uh, people of Vilnius and um, Eastern Lithuania were killed, and most of them were Jews. The extraordinary commission in its report writes that it was 100,000 people. This number is also mentioned in the Nuremberg process. We understand that this has a historic and symbolic meaning. Panere is very important. Therefore, the Vilna Gaon State Jewish Museum initiated uh, the memorial reconstruction project uh, uh, right after it uh, gained um, the complex in uh, 2014. In 2016, uh, within the framework of this uh, project, uh, the Lithuanian Institute of History and uh, Vilna Gaon State Sh Jewish Museum and its researchers uh, started uh, working uh, and conducting uh, research uh, but it's a non-destructive uh, research in the area of in this uh, area of mass killing. The first uh, stage uh, uh, of this uh, research uh, was uh, uh, and its results were published, uh, and uh, you can uh, read about it uh, on the uh, specific uh, website uh, that is under the Department of uh, Cultural Heritage. And uh, I will uh, present uh, the, these results to you today. As it has already been mentioned, uh, the impetus uh, for this research was uh, the fact that the museum prepared uh, a reconstruction of this memorial, and uh, they wanted to, to have uh, the op to understand which objects need to be protected. Uh, until uh, the beginning of our research uh, in uh, Panere. Uh, you see what uh, map was there at the time. Uh, it's uh, the memorial of 19 uh, hectares. And uh, there uh, we knew of uh, five uh, killing pits and uh, one uh, of the so-called uh, burning pits, uh, which uh, since uh, in, in which uh, from 1943 uh, November, uh, prisoners of war lived who had to dig up uh, the dead bodies and uh, burn them. We thought that there might be more killing uh, pits uh, which were uh, covered uh, now in uh, in earth. And uh, we uh, actually found uh, that there are two uh, places uh, which uh, we could uh, identify. And that was uh, done in 2015 by the help of a geo radar. And uh, the question was then, maybe we could find even more uh, such uh, uh, pits uh, that were covered in earth now. And uh, thus, we used a 3D scanner. And uh, we then were able to uh, have a plan of uh, the memorial re relief. And this is what you see on the slide. And we were able to see this memorial in 2D as well as in 3D. And uh, the data here, you can see uh, how uh, what's uh, how the slopes look like, uh, how high everything is or low, and uh, that is uh, in uh, the different colors. And uh, we used uh, also. Um, the other plans that we have had before, and we found that this uh, newly scanned relief uh, plan was much more precise. There are different ways uh, to see uh, the relief now. And uh, therefore, we were able to look uh, much deeper into it and to interpret uh, this information. And uh, thus, uh, we used uh, the maps that we had of this area from from the time that we are uh, investigating as well as uh, aerial uh, photo shots and uh, we used uh, uh, two plans uh, that were available uh, before the war of uh, 1921 and 1932 and 10 maps that we had uh, of the area up until 1988 we mainly use uh, uh, the so-called uh, 
plan of the base uh, of Panere. Uh, that was uh, the map of the, this uh, base, and that was uh, done in 1946. And uh, that was uh, made by the Extraordinary Commission that was uh, uh, performing exhumation research at the time. But uh, we found that it is uh, not uh, very precise. As uh, we were reconstructing the changes in the surface, uh, we found a very useful uh, era. A photo shot uh, of uh, that was uh, made by Germans in 1944, and uh, it is uh, a very uh, good uh, example how our research was uh, covered uh, in this uh, IR photo shot. And we also uh, made a 3D relief uh, map, and we used uh, various uh, other. Uh, photos that were made uh, in the uh, time period of 1941 and 1945. With uh, all this data, we were able to localize and under identify the objects that are seen in, the in those old uh, photos, uh, um, killing uh, pits, uh, various uh, buildings uh, and uh, paths, etc. And uh, what was uh, extremely important uh, was uh, the testimonies uh, of uh, the people uh, who uh, saw what was happening there. And uh, those testimonies, among the, the most important ones, uh, were, uh, of course, uh, the writings of Kazimierz Sakovicius. Well, uh, let me tell you a little bit uh, in more detail uh, all these uh, objects that we have found. Well, first object are the execution pits. We had identified eight uh, round uh, pits and uh, three rectangular kits, uh, pits in the plan. Uh, apart from the burner's pit, uh, all others were used to uh, shoot people. Uh, and you can see that uh, these uh, certain these bits are very clearly seen from the uh, scanned Borelief ma map. What's uh, very interesting is that uh, we can see uh, where the trees were planted, and uh, we found out that uh, the forest uh, where this base was uh, later on established was planted uh, in uh, the beginning of uh, the 20th century before the First World War, and uh, we could see that uh, these uh, trees were planted in a very clear pattern, in a clear sequence. And uh, we saw that uh, where uh, this uh, sequence or pattern is uh, broken, we might think that uh, there was something uh, done underneath there. Maybe there is uh, a pit that is covered in Earth there. But uh, we haven't uh, performed the geophysical uh, um, experiments uh, on the site yet. Uh, during uh, our research, uh, we found that we can see uh, various architectural elements. First of all, we have embankments around uh, the pits. Uh, then we have uh, openings in those uh, embankments that were used uh, for shooting. And uh, that w those ones are very clearly seen uh, by the pits uh, D11 and D13. Uh, usually, there were four such openings uh, in the uh, killing pits. Uh, there were also areas where uh, people were uh, placed before they, they were killed. There were also uh, lookout posts uh, that were uh, established uh, bef right beside the pits. And finally, a, a larger areas uh, with ramps uh, that were uh, devoted uh, for the uh, for the army people. The second object uh, uh, are trenches. And uh, here we can see the big, uh, trend, the, the biggest uh, trenches uh, and its uh, contours. Uh, one of the trenches uh, could, could be used uh, for the, uh, the people 
for the dead bodies to be taken away to be burned. And there are historical data that uh, these uh, trenches might have been used for killings as well. The third uh, objects are the uh, burning places. The, we have identified 18 of such uh, places, and uh, that is where the bodies were burned. And uh, in our plan, we have uh, uh, identified uh, them. And the, in 1944, the Extraordinary Commission identified uh, the ones that are uh, named L1 through L3. And uh, we identified the ones through, the, through L4 through L18. We used uh, 3D scanner data and uh, also uh, our uh, in in situ research we can uh, very clearly see in the uh, picture of 1944 that uh, there seem to be a certain uh, bits that were covered in earth and that's where we uh, think that there were those uh, burning uh, uh, places when we looked into it uh, in situ, we found that there are old trees that uh, were uh, burnt a little bit. And uh, therefore, we were able to identify where the center of uh, the burning pit was. Now, the fourth object uh, are the entrenchments. And uh, here we see uh, different uh, forms and different shapes of these uh, trenches. There are some trenches uh, for a number of um, uh, personnel, and those are um, uh, rectangular. There are also trenches for one shooter. The, those are uh, in, in circle. Also, there are big ones uh, for, for the uh, people with bigger guns. And uh, there are... Um, all sorts of uh, uh, entrenchments uh, all around the base, which were used uh, for protection. We ha it has to be noted that uh, there are also entrenchments uh, behind the perimeter of uh, the base. Uh, and those are logically placed uh, by the gates, by the smaller gates, uh, by the roads, and by the trenches. The fifth object uh, are are constructions. And uh, in the documents, uh, we uh, see that uh, there are all sorts of uh, constructions that, that were in this uh, base. And uh, most of them were built uh, in 1940 by the Soviets when they were uh, preparing to have a fuel base here. Now, the six objects is the infrastructure of roads. Uh, based on the old plans, it uh, might be said that uh, they were the main roads, and uh, K1, K7 was uh, the main road. And uh, apart from these uh, bigger roads, there were the smaller paths uh, that were used uh, to bring uh, people uh, to, towards the trenches and towards the killing uh, pits. All of this uh, information is uh, quite uh, astonishing because uh, it uh, shows that uh, Panere was not just a base for mass uh, killings, but uh, it is a killing factory. Therefore, it is unfathomable uh, what this uh, fa Factory, how, what is how it operated, and this mechanism is now um, we can see the footprint of it in the earth, and uh, these uh, footprints uh, are uh, fixed in the relief reconstruction plan. Therefore, what we must uh, have, uh, we must uh, safeguard this uh, relief. And uh, it w has already been uh, talked about in 1983 in uh, Makarunas Memorial um, uh, Project because uh, there uh, they wanted uh, to uh, 
to change the way this area looks like. But uh, that is something that we need to avoid in the future because uh, as we can see uh, from this uh, relief uh, analysis is that everything was placed here on purpose. Uh, one of the main road uh, analysis has shown uh, that uh, uh, this base that we are talking about is just uh, a small, it covers just a small area. So the question is, how big uh, was this base outside the uh, gate of the base? The main point of uh, departure to look at the area of uh, the base is uh, the uh, scheme uh, that was uh, presented in Viktor Ivanovsky's books. And uh, here we see that uh, the base uh, uh, limits are in, in the west and in the north uh, where the road of Vilnius Gardenas meets. That's uh, from the railway crossing and it is uh, approximately 670 meters. This uh, road uh, is uh, one of the oldest uh, roads uh, uh, that we can uh, identify in this area, and it uh, existed uh, for a very long time. It was uh, behind uh, the railway, which was uh, established in 1860, 1863. And uh, we see that uh, there was a, a small path uh, going uh, from the railway uh, tracks uh, to the northern uh, limit of the base. And uh, in uh, the east and uh, southeast, uh, this border was approximately 1,300 meters, whereas in the north, it was approximately 780 meters. In uh, the Witnessing of uh, Kazimir Sakovic, uh, uh, this co was called as a strategic uh, road. In this uh, area, the base uh, limit is approximately 900 meters. It has to be noted that the strategic uh, road uh, uh, was 1.7 kilometers, uh, and it was uh, made only in the 1930s of, and uh, that was done right before the war. The roads that used to be here were just going to the nearby uh, villages of Kazbie and Noyakimis. So uh, the road uh, was uh, going uh, around uh, these uh, villages. I have uh, already mentioned uh, this uh, uh, limit of the base uh, where the eastern and uh, southeastern uh, side meets the strategic uh, road. In the Second uh, World War, this uh, part of the uh, this this part uh, of Lithuania was uh, very important because uh, there was a very good railroad link to, in, in Panare and uh, there was a very good uh, connection to uh, for the planes to to where the planes were landing therefore uh, we uh, found uh, that the plan of the base is not uh, as uh, geometrically, does not have the geometrical shape that we see in Viktor Ivanovsky's uh, scheme. We think that uh, the area could uh, be as big as uh, 86 hectares. In Ivanovsky's uh, plan, there are uh, a few entrances uh, to the base. There was uh, there is uh, a first uh, gate uh, which we can uh, identify very clearly, and it was uh, identified precisely in Ivanovsky scheme. That was the first gate, and uh, this gate uh, is uh, usually talked about in Sakovich's uh, um, witnessing. 
and uh, that's uh, where you come from Vilnius uh, in, towards as you go for, towards Gardenas. There are 80 meters uh, from uh, the rail crossing uh, to the start of the base. According to the picture of 1944, we can see that uh, there are uh, other gates uh, that were uh, built uh, five to six meters uh, from the main roads. We cannot uh, confirm uh, the uh, notion that uh, the perim perimeter of the base was uh, surrounded by an embankment uh, or uh, by a moat. The second uh, gate uh, that is in in this uh, scheme, uh, which is uh, shown from this coming from the strategic road side. Uh, we are not sure where that exactly is. Uh, however, we can uh, think that uh, we might lo localize it in two uh, areas. It is either gate to A or to B. And uh, they, these uh, places uh, are um, where there are certain paths coming from uh, the north uh, south uh, uh, that go throughout uh, the base uh, the inner of the base territory there are roads uh, that are coming that we can see in the Ivanovsky's uh, scheme uh, and there are gates uh, noted to 2A uh, but uh, in the plans that we see before the war we see that uh, the second road is uh, chronologically earlier and it was uh, there before the base was uh, established in the scheme we also see that there are other gates there uh, there, there's a gate coming from Yogelone uh, village, and uh, this uh, we can see uh, uh, gate number three, uh, and a, a more precise uh, localization of it uh, at the moment could cannot be done. The 3D uh, scanner data also uh, shows that we need to look uh, at uh, other. Uh, objects uh, that are uh, mentioned in the Ivanovsky scheme. There are a few reasons for that. Uh, first of all, we in the scheme there is uh, not uh, we do not have uh, the railway tr tr spare tracks that uh, are there. Uh, also, uh, there have been two such uh, uh, railway spare tracks and they were coming uh, both ways uh, to the base. Uh, the first uh, tracks is uh, 350 meters, uh, and uh, the second one is uh, 500 uh, meters. We can uh, think uh, that uh, the base uh, was uh, uh, very well connected uh, with uh, different uh, gates. We have already mentioned that uh, the first and second gate uh, was uh, um, going to uh, roads K1 and K2, whereas uh, the other main roads uh, were going to the main uh, um, railway uh, crossings, uh, that is uh, roads K4 and K3. Also, logically thinking, uh, there uh, should have been one more gate there, uh, somewhere close to, to the main uh, railroad uh, that is uh, from the side of Yegeloni village, and that is gate number four. Uh, therefore, we can claim that the base was actually 86 uh, hectares uh, in an area, and it uh, had uh, at least four gates. At the moment, relief uh, in the in this space uh, has changed quite a bit. And uh, these uh, changes are co connected to the fact that uh, there are new railway crossings uh, here. Uh, between uh, 1953 and 1958, uh, we had uh, new railroad, uh, railroad tracks uh, built here. 
and uh, some of the railway tracks uh, are not there anymore. How, even though we can see that in our uh, in our aerial shots and uh, our research, and uh, probably uh, we. Probably due to the fact that uh, certain um, railway tracks uh, were lost, uh, we have this uh, natural uh, um, places where the area of Banere is stopped, and therefore it's only 19 hectares. Thank you very much for the very detailed presentation of the research. And uh, <laughs> uh, I'm afraid we have scheduled, but one, two very short questions we can take, so uh, very briefly, if there are questions. Yes, please. And then um, Mr. Sheikhat, and that's it, with two questions, yeah. Thank you for a brilliant explanation of the geography of this site and what you've learned. I wonder, given the difficulty of any physical changes to the ground at Panarai, if you have thought about using a digital app approach for people to guide themselves or be guided through the landscape and see on their phones or their tablets what the ground was rather than disturbing it. This is exactly our goal. This is exactly our goal. This is what we are planning to have. Thanks to 3D scanner, we can do it now. And we can digitalize the territory itself with the help of 3D scanner. And in the future, the museum will be able to use the digitalized information for its purposes to cover the territory with digital applications. And we will use this digital data, uh, which will be used together with a new methodology that the museum is about to develop. For example, tourists can, visitors can use their tablets or phones to see how the territory looked like before or how it looks like in our digital presentation. I saw the hand of Mr. Shekhet, so this is the last question. Thank you. Thank you very much for such a very, thank you very much for your presentation which shows that you up to date uh, the whole uh, studies for the mass graves. I would like to ask if the government of Ukraine accepts your studies as legally proved and they could be used for land uh, documentation and excluding these sites from the common usage. Ukrainas? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Lithuanian government. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lithuanian government, because I'm from Ukraine, that's why. <laughs> so your studies are very exceptional, but is Lithuanian government accepts these studies as legally proved and you could apply to the government of Ukraine, of Lithuania, I'm sorry, government of Lithuania, that the government will exclude this and also establish a protected zone and everything what is connected to the status of this land. Well, um, if I may, if I may, um, the, 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 the current territory, uh, we are happy that uh, there is an interest for, for, uh, from Ukraine because uh, we sought during the process of discovering that the Soviet topography is not exact and the additional studies and research with uh, modern archaeological equipment gives us a very surprising, gives us a number of surprises which shows that it was a very serious 
ge Nazi factory of death uh, structured uh, in a much wider way than it was established by the Soviets as it was used just for monuments. Now, uh, 19 hectares, Camille correct, will correct me if I don't remember exactly, 19 hectares of this territory belongs to the museum, which is a protected zone. It is protected zone. But we are, we are discovering pits and traces of infrastructure, say for the guards or for, for um, additional um, branch of the railroad under, under Earth, that uh, the territory, the protected territory, should be much wider, and it is still in the process of uh, discovering. Uh, when we will discover this, we will establish necessary conditions for the architects, for the contests, etc., etc. We will build a museum. We'll decide what the what the territory is. I'm not. We will have to stop somewhere. But now we are discovering things wider, much wider than the Soviet tip, the topography for the 70 years uh, was, uh, was, was uh, given for these uh, monuments. And it shows us that Soviet commissions did, us, did a very hasty job. They had to report in short time maybe to Comrade Stalin or to somewhere above. So uh, we are, we, it's, it's very interesting that it shows that before we are building monuments in these territories of mass killings in the eastern provinces of the Third Reich, which includes Ukraine, of course, we need to do a fresh document, to check up freshly documentary sources, because during the years of independence, the, the, the documentary sources in the West are available much wider than it was in the Soviet Union. The first thing. The second thing is that um, we have to, um, to do our archaeological research with the modern equipment. Thank you. Yeah, I believe. Uh, thank you very much. You're doing really fantastic, very special job. Thank you. Very impressive. But my next question is, what is the equipment you use? What, how it's called when you say that it was scanned? What kind of a scanner? What is really the equipment you use for the 3D uh, visualization of the mass graves? Thank you. I cannot tell you the exact technical data. I cannot tell you that. We had physicists working with us, so they could tell you exactly what kind of equipment they used. They used 3D geo radar. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Netting and Solus. And uh, we still have one and a half day, so uh, if you have more questions, you can interact with them on an individual basis. And uh, now we invite the participants of the first panel session on identification.